question. You know what? Our toll station has always been like this. Covenant, give the most high hand clap of praise for another opportunity to gather together in his house and to celebrate his name for all of his goodness to us. It's always a blessing to gather together.
Let us now take this opportunity to stand and recite our invitation to celebration. We give you thanks, O Lord God, for all your goodness at all times and in all places. Blessed are you, Lord God, ruler of all creation, for by your goodness we have this bread from the soil and this fruit from the vine. Therefore, we honor and adore your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Lord Most High. Amen. You may be seated. family. Our first scripture this morning will be taken from the book of Psalms, the 98th number in its entirety. That's Psalm number 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gained him the victory. The Lord is made, has made known his salvation, his righteousness, he has revealed in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his mercy and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. And the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout joyfully to the Lord and the, er, all the earth. Break forth in song. Rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with the harp with the harp and with the sound of song, Amen. with the trumpet, trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout joyfully before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth. With righteousness, he shall judge the world and the peoples with equity. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, family. Uh, just reading that Psalms, it said the seas clap their hands. <laughs> uh, you know, I heard that once. I said the rocks going to cry out if we don't get praise. Let us go to the throne room of grace. Gracious God, our Father, we come once again with bowed heads and humbled hearts, always with thanksgiving on our lips, how we praise you and worship you because of what you have done through us. You touched our hearts. You called us out of the darkness to the marvelous light of Christ. And because of him, we have access to the very throne room of heaven. Father, we just come this morning asking your involvement in our lives because we realize we can't make this journey alone. We pray that you will lead, guide, and direct our lives. Give us ears to hear, to obey your word. We ask your blessing on each one under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you would bless us with the things that we stand in need of. You know, I may ask for this thing or that thing, but we're just going to cast our cares on you because you always do above and beyond what we ask and think. When we fall in dire places and, and troubled lands, Father, we realize after it's all over that you're the one that kept us. You're the one that guided and directed our lives, and we're thankful for that. We're lifting up those that are sick, the shut-in, the bereaved, the downtrodden, Lord. We know that you care for us because you sent Christ. But we pray for those that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, that eternity is too long and hell is too horrendous. Let us lead our lives in such a way that we would point them to the Savior, to the Master, 
Let us be obedient servant and testify about the goodness you have done for us. We lift up our pastor to you in a special way that you give him a special blessing in the bereavement of his family. Touch and strengthen his mind and his body. He's a wonderful pastor who has a pastor's heart. Bless his family in this time of bereavement. And then, Father, touch us all in a special way. From the choir stand to the Ursha station, lead, guide, and direct us is my prayer. Then, Father, we pray for the person that's going to give the message today. Let us hear the word from on high that it would bless our lives, that we may be strengthened, that we would go from here praising your holy name. Lead, guide, and direct us always is our prayer. In the master's name of Christ, our Savior, hallelujah. Let us stand again as we recite our cultural heritage. We are the New Covenant Baptist Church. We are a fellowship. We are the old ship of Zion. We are one who, and nothing can stop us now. For greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Umoja. Ujima. Jamma. Ujama. Let new covenant rise. Let God be wise. I love you. I respect you. I will not seek your physical nor spiritual downfall. No one will place any boundaries on my conduct. I will trust you. I will aid you. I will ensure that you care for your family and time with you. I will sustain you. Let us unite and become one. I respect you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Let new covenant rise. Shalom once again, family. Our Old Testament scriptures coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verses 17 through 25. That's Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. But be and rejoice forever in that which I put in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in the voice of crying. There shall be no more dents of empty days, for the child shall die in a hundred years old, but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and years and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build, other inhabitant shall not plant, and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, 
and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat, and, th and shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, said the Lord. Hallelujah. The New Testament passage comes from the book of 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter, verses 6 to 13. Again, 2 Thessalonians, the third chapter, verses 6 to 13. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we give you this command in the name of our Lord, Yahshua HaMashiach. Stay away from all believers who live idle lives and don't follow the traditions they received from us. For you know that you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you. We never accepted food from anyone without paying for it. We worked hard day and night so we would not be a burden to any of you. We certainly had the right to ask you to feed us, but we wanted to give you an example to follow. Even while we were with you, we gave you this command. Those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Yet we hear that some of you are living idle lives, refusing to work, and meddling in other people's business. We command such people and urge them in the name of our Lord, Yahshua HaMasiach, to settle down and work to own their own living. As for the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters, never get tired of doing good. Hallelujah. morning once again church once again it is just a, a great opportunity for us to come together this morning and gather together to fellowship once again in the name of our father and of our lord so we thank you all for taking this opportunity to gather with us today we thank all of those that may be watching online for taking a moment out of your day to fellowship with us on this morning we know the most high is blessing this place as we speak and we know that this worship service will go forth and be powerful and glorifying unto his name. So now at this time, we invite you all to stand up, greet your neighbor, and this, our Peace Fellowship.
Today's reading, scripture reading, will be coming from the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, verses 5 through 19. Again, Luke 21, verses 5 through 19. From the New Living Translation, it reads, Some of his disciples began talking about the majestic stonework of the temple and the memorial decorations on the walls. But Jesus said, The time is coming when all these things will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Teacher, they asked, when will this happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to take place? He replied, don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and saying, the time has come. But don't believe them. And when you hear of the wars and insurrections, don't panic. Yes, these things must take place first, but the end won't follow immediately. Then he added, nations will go to war against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be great earthquakes and there will be famines and plagues in many lands and there will be terrifying things and great miraculous signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, there will be a time of great persecution. You will be dragged into synagogues and prisons, and you will stand trial before kings and governors because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. So don't worry in advance about how to answer the charges against you. For I will give you the right words and such wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to reply or refute you. Even those closest to you, your parents, your brothers, relatives, and friends will betray you. They will even kill some of you. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But not a hair on your head will perish. By standing firm, you will win your souls. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Glory be to God. So 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Eternal Father, we come to you this morning, Father, thanking you. Father, thanking you for this day. Father, thank you for this opportunity. Father, and most importantly, Father, we thank you for your gratefulness, Father. You are better to us than we are to ourselves, Father. And we just want to just humble ourselves today and say thank you. Father God, we raise up our pastor. We lift our pastor and, and Dr. Barr above today. Father, give them traveling graces and mercies, Father, and continue to bless them, Father. Father, comfort them and their family at this hour of bereavement. Father, thank you. Father, we just ask right now, Father, that you will clear our hearts and our minds that we may receive what it is you have for us today in your word. And Father, consecrate me, Father. Give meaning and life to these words, Father, as I speak. And we pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, family. And Sister Dunlap almost took me out of here, as, as how I said, with that song. Let's give the most high a hand clap of praise for Sister Dunlap. And that wonderful song, hallelujah. If you guys will uh, stand with me, uh, I have a verse to read, I'm, all right, from the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verse 1. 
verse 5. Just want to lift up this one verse. And it says, Then Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. Let me read that again. Joshua told the people, Purify yourselves, for tomorrow Yahweh will do great wonders among you. And for about three minutes, y'all, we ain't going to be alone. Um, take the uh, subject of consecration for turbulent times, preparation, dedication, and anticipation of Father Yah's promise. All right. You may be seated. Hallelujah. All right. All right, the background for our text today centers around the refusal of the first generation of Israelites that came out of Egyptian slavery to exemplify faith, their failure to exemplify faith in Father Yah's instructions to enter the promised land. I entering the promised land meant turbulent times, yeah. dealing with giants, fears, and fortified cities. Yeah. At the banks of the Jordan River, Moses sent out 12 spies to survey the land, to determine the proper strategies to conquer and, and occupy the land Father Yah had given his people. Success in fulfilling Father Yah's instructions requires faith. Faith operates by remembering Father Yah's opening the Red Sea and allowing the Israelites to escape Pharaoh's army. What has Father Yah done for you today that would discourage you from trusting him? Right. What has he done? Has he kept his promises? Yes. Life lesson one, obedience is better than sacrifice. And lacking it causes one to forfeit the present and future blessings. Faithless, excuse, the faithless Israelites refused to accept the accurate, faith, faithful report of Joshua and Caleb. Instead, they received the faithless report of the ten who lacked courage, faith, and obedience to take, to take the land Father Yah promised them. Obedience has consequences. The entire first ge generation of Israelites had firsthand experience of the presence and power of Father Yah to deliver them. Their faith was based upon their, what their eyes could see and not on the power of Father Yah, his promises, and his providence. Therefore, that generation, excluding those 20 years of age and older, they died in the wilderness. They wandered in the wilderness. Again, family, disobedience has consequences. Now, in our verse today, under the new, excuse me, under the leadership of Joshua, Moses' successor is preparing the second generation of Israelites to enter the promised land by crossing the Jordan River. Crossing, crossing the Jordan River by the Israelites was an obstacle as, as significant as the Red Sea. Right. Listen to the text beginning at verse 1. Early the next morning, Joshua and all the Israelites left Acacia Grove and arrived at the banks of the Jordan where they camped before crossing. Three days before the Israelite officers went th through, through the camp, giving instructions to the people. When you see the Le Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, move out from your position and follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before, they will guide you. Stay about a half a mile behind them. Keep a Keep a clear distance between you and the ark. Make sure you don't come any closer. 
Brothers and sisters, success in life comes when you follow divine instruction. Life lesson number two. Unfortunately, though, the Israelites were not ready spiritually to enter the promised land. Like many of us today, the inability to surrender our lives to Father Yah, purify, consecrate ourselves for righteous living and service. The, the Israelites did not cross the Jordan in an unorganized, disorderly manner. No, on the contrary, it was not an, it was not an every man for themselves type of thing but a highly organized process, procedure, that assured an efficient and successful crossing. Following the ark symbolically portrayed the fact of following Yah. When and where the ark moved, they were to move as well, but at a distance. Therefore, if we desire as a people Excuse me, therefore, if we desire success as a people, we must obey and follow Father Yah's instructions. Listen to what the prophet Jeremiah says. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you hope and a future. Hallelujah. However, the Israelites must consecrate themselves before they enter the land. Joshua told the people, purify, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow Father Yah will do great wonders among you. In other words, Father Yah is about to do something great to help you overcome the obstacles and the enemies in uh, your way. But first, they must consecrate themselves. In the context of the Mosaic Covenant, Consecration meant that something or someone was set apart, separated from common, common or worldly use, and dedicated to the use of Father Yah's service. Joshua's command to the nation is relevant today. As we, as we dedicate ourselves to the serving Father Yah and pursuing the promises for our lives in turbulent times. Pure purification and sanctification has a high priority in the service of Yah. Too much of the time in church is spent on programs, promotions, and strategies rather than purifying ourselves for effective ministry. Of course, of course programs and promotions and strategy have their place, but purity Consecration has a higher priority than any of them in Father Yah's view. Therefore, we need to purify ourselves, purify our thoughts, our heart for service in, to serving Father Yah. Life lesson three. Joshua said, tomorrow Father Yah will do great wonders among you. If you want Father Yah to work for you, clean up. If you wish, Father Yah, to work mightily on your behalf, you must practice holiness, holiness in speech, holiness in practice. If, it, in fact, it would be best to say, Father Yah, work on my mind so that I can think right. Work on my mouth so that I can speak right. Work on my heart so that I can love right. Work on my hands, Father, so that I can serve and give right. Work on my feet so I can walk right, Father. Thank you, Father Yah. When Father Yah gets through working on you, you will come out holy, sanctified, purified, fit for service. In turbulent times, remember, consecration is required. Faith, consecration, and obedience to Father Yah's command. So, when you guys leave here today, and I'm just about done, I want you to remember this. To serve in these turbulent times and cross over your Jordan and access Father Yah's promise, you must consecrate yourself to be, to be prepared to serve. Secondly, you must dedicate yourself. Lastly, anticipate and believe that Father Yah will step in and do what he said he was going to do. Hallelujah. So, family, 
before uh, to consecrate yourself and uh, surrender yourself, before we leave, I just want to thank Father Yah for this opportunity again. And, and if there's anyone here today that have not made their minds up to serve Father Yah, we just want to invite you to, and this is the opportunity for you to come down, give your life to the Lord, and consecrate yourselves for these turbulent times. Or if you're looking for a church home, a place to worship, this is the place for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give us this day. Let's give the most high hand praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'll probably say, Reverend Turner, what you doing up there? Uh, let's give the speaker a hand praise. Great job. Now it's time for our tithes and offering. Will we please turn to our bulletin, the liturgy of, our, of the table? Set apart by your covenant, redeemed through Christ's sacrifice, and renewed by the refreshing winds of your living spirit, we come bearing our gifts, O merciful Yah. They are but a portion of earth's treasure you abundantly give us. With them, we commit our time and energy to be Christ's faithful servants. Use all that we bring and all that we are to bless your holy name, through Yahshua Hamasid. I mean, Tyler's covenant, the earth belongs to Yah. Everything in all the world is his. How can I repay Yah for all his goodness to me?
For if you give, you will get. Your gift will return to you in full and overflowing measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use to give, large or small, will be used to measure what is given back to you. But remember this, if you give little, you will get little. Hallelujah. Now at this time, I place you in the hands of the deacons and the ushers. Hallelujah, family. Today we uh, have a message, uh, consecration. Okay, consecration uh, for turbulent times, preparation, dedication, and anticipation of Father Yah's promises. What what we were aiming to uh, bless with was if we consecrate ourselves, if we prepare ourselves for serving Father Yah in these turbulent times, that is what's needed. Preparation, dedication, and anticipation of Father Yah's promises for our lives. Hallelujah. So this is my first time doing this, so I'm stumbling because I've never done this part before. But hey, I just want to bless you guys. I'm a little, uh, you know, shaky with this part, but you guys have a blessed week, and God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> 